She'd written White Teeth in her final year at Cambridge. I'd heard about this book, I'd heard about her, so I was really excited. The first shoot, I did two, was for a magazine called Talk. She was a little shy, maybe a little bit overwhelmed by the huge attention globally that she was starting to receive. We met at Kilburn Tube and we decided just to wander around. They're my favorite shoots, just allowing for things to happen sort of organically. Spontaneity is everything. The best pictures just fall into your lap. We walked down to a building, which I later learned was called the Tin Tabernacle. And it's got to be one of London's quirkiest buildings. I was attracted by the corrugated iron, and it's something that I've been drawn to several times. I quite often photograph people against a textured wall. And also, I like corrugated iron. I don't know why. I was to use it when I photographed Jamie Oliver for the cover of his cookbook. As we chatted, I asked her if she liked being photographed. I mean, she was so photogenic. And she said that when she was a little girl, her dad used to be taking pictures all the time because he was a photographer. So that sort of made sense. She seemed very comfortable in front of the camera for someone so young. The session was fun and we just ambled around Kilburn, making conversation, stopping, taking pictures. And like all good portrait sessions, it was a record of the relationship I had with her on the day. We wound up in this laundrette that didn't look as though it had been modernised for many years. It's a classic, I think it's still on Kilburn High Road. I like the idea of this sort of familiar location, the sort of place she might have frequented when she was a student at Cambridge. It was a real retro affair. I photographed her through one of the circular doors of the dryer. And it was a nice example of something I call a frame within a frame. And quite often, you can ignore composition. It doesn't have to be so tight, breaking the rules maybe. If you have a frame within a frame, you can have sort of chaos and disorder. But within that frame, as long as there is order and serenity and a visual calmness, it works. This was typical of the way I like to work, kind of guerrilla shooting, not like Annie Leibovitz and organized months in advance, but just meeting somebody and improvising on the day. I think you end up with much more authentic pictures because you never know how the light's going to play. There might be some amazing light that sort of reflects from a building over the other side of the street and then comes back. As we said goodbye, she said to me, so, are you gonna read me? And I think I blushed. I was sort of quite taken aback. It was quite a intimate phrase. It was completely innocuous, but I always remembered it. The second shoot, she had really bad flu. She was actually holding a cup of Lemsip as she sort of ushered us into her home in Queen's Park. It was winter and her flu was so bad that we were never going to leave the house. I mean, the shoot should have been cancelled, but she was so kind to let us invade her, her home. It was great to see her again. It was great to catch up, although slightly disconcerting as she looked exactly the same as she'd done 15 years ago when I'd done the last shoot. Her and her husband, Nick, clearly are erudite, sophisticated people with great taste. The house was full of interesting nooks and crannies. So there were lots of options, including a sort of a mural that had been painted, I think, by a friend. We chatted and I snapped away whilst the grooming took place that she didn't need. I often take pictures whilst waiting to do the proper formal shoot because it's a way of kind of getting rid of tension and getting used to getting into the rhythm of, of a shoot. And then after it got dark, I did some pictures with tungsten, just a bare tungsten bulb, I think. I don't think I lit it, I think I used a light bulb. But even they worked because she was so beautiful. Photographing celebrities is pretty shallow. Photographing people like Zadie Smith, on the other hand, suddenly it all makes sense. And it's a worthwhile thing to do because you're getting the opportunity to meet an extraordinary talented person, an important part of the cultural landscape. 
and it becomes not just a pleasure, but a privilege.